Hello, hello, hello. That is us just literally started the Cape Raft Trail. If you're wondering how this looks slightly different, we have gone a slightly different route to begin with. We've got the Corrin Ferry across and instead we're walking north rather than south from the little ferry from Fort William. We're not sure if the little ferry's running yet, so that's why we've gone for the Corrin Ferry. Plus this gives us a little bit less road walking as well, so that's a, a Brucey bonus. But yeah, it's quarter past twelve, it's a rather nice day. So it uh, gives us about eight, nine hours of daylight to get down Connor Glen as much as we can. And I'm also doing it with some company. I've got Mr Ian K as well. Who put me up last night in another pool. And we'll stop there. Probably on day eight or nine, do you reckon, Ian? Do you reckon we'll stop at yours day eight or nine? Aye, probably. Aye. See how it goes. So yeah, we're just walking around this bay and then just beyond this shoulder it comes down here it will be our entrance into Connor Glen. Alrighty, we've been going an hour and 20 minutes and that's us reached the opening for Connor Glen and that's 6.64 kilometres on the clock so that isn't too bad at all. So, let's get cracking up Connor Glen. Footwear dilemma. This was organised pretty short notice. I mean, I'd done the Scottish National Trail just two, three weeks back. My boots were letting in water, and uh, so I decided not to wear boots. And I've gone with the trail runners. But the trail runners gave me a blister when I mean, I'd done a little short section on the John Muir Way. So I'm a wee bit worried. I've gone for the wrong footwear. But I just didn't have the money or the time to splash out in new boots. So that's why I've opted for the trail runners on this occasion. I've just readjusted them because I was just so paranoid that blisters were starting to kick in already. Alrighty, 15 kilometres in. This seems like a good wee place to stop for a breather. Alright folks, that's 21 kilometres on the clock. It's took us about nearly five hours to get here and we're going to pitch here. It's quite nice. There's a lot of tussocky ground and just couldn't find anywhere. So definitely going to stay here for the night. It seems a rather intimate pitch squeezing in the two tents here. I just hope Ian isn't a loud snorer. And we're right next to this river too, so that's handy. The sound of the river will soothe us to sleep. Uh, right, we're not having much luck. I've got a small blister on my heel already. Not good, don't know how that's happened. Ian's canister is goosed, so he's had to use one that's nearly empty as well, so he's got a gear malfunction. <laughs> Day one, shocking. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Can you see that? <laughs> Good morning campers. It is 10 to 7 and uh, that was a good sleep. Very little wind. 
Subing River noises and it was about 4 degrees as well so not too cold. So we're just contemplating getting up shortly. Um, going to let the sun rise and try and burn off some of the condensation on the tents before we set off but we'll be away on or just before 9 o'clock. Alrighty folks, it's 20 to 9 and that's us packed up, ready to go. As always, leave no trace. You ready? Aye. Let's roll. A little adder. Don't see one of them for a while. Very little guy, I'm going to bore you. Right, so from here, this is the first proper climb of the day. I'll go up here, still make it out there, and then that's going to double back and then up behind here. And I think it's about 150 metres of ascent. I am a tad bit concerned about this blister, so I've really have tightened my shoes as much as possible and just hope I've caught that in the nick of time. The shoes were actually rubbing off the compied plasters as well, which was a, a bit worrying. So uh, it's almost tightened to the point I'll strangulate my ankles. <laughs> Alrighty, that's 50 minutes on the clock, we've reached the top of the pass and you can probably see the Munro Gull Vane just behind us there. It's just a gentle descent down and we'll pick up a track a bit further down there as well, so that's not too bad. Righty-o, that's us back on the track and this will take us to, what's it called, Callop? Callop, yeah. Yeah, Callop. And then from there, we'll walk along towards Glenfinnan. Righty-o, we've been going two hours and 20 minutes and that's us back in civilization for a wee while at least. We've got about another three kilometers to Glenfinnan. Ian's going to try and get some gas because he had that faulty gas canister that was playing up and then we'll head, on, we'll head up under the viaduct towards Corrie Hilly Boffey and then up and over the pass and down towards Glen Desiree. Right, there's a signpost there and we will come off this track and Along here. Okay, so, uh, I mean, it's not, it's not a deal breaker anyway, so. Okay. Okay, cheers. Right, right we had a bit of a, an extended break at the National Trust Visitor Centre. Got a good scran. I think any opportunity to get a cafe or a pub or something like that, just to bump up the calories. So we've both had burger and chips. Magic. Corey Hilly Boffy, looking like he's getting some pointing done. 
whilst we're at the boffy, we're just doing a little blister check. Mine's is okay, the, the blister, the compede's doing its job, thankfully. I'm just aware of it though, it's just niggly a little bit. And Ian, how's your blisters? They're okay, just I'm putting one on just more for prevention than yeah. anything else. Same here. Alrighty, folks, we've just had first sight of the pass we have to go up and over. Right here, it looks quite far than now. So, uh, yeah, you've got a street on the right, you've got this Munro, the name escapes me just now, to the left, and then our pass, boom, right in the middle. Slow and steady progress. We came down a little steep bit there. Uh, the path looked non existent, but we seem to be on a faint path at the moment. And we're just going to take our time, really. Not too far now. <laughs> we're going to head down here. I don't know if you can see in the camera, there's a bridge. We'll pick up the forestry track and we'll head that way and then we'll skirt that way and once we get to Strathen, which is roughly about here it's about a four kilometre walk on good track to the Boffy, just round there so uh, yeah we're happy we're, we're getting there slowly day two has been a biggie well that was fun after crossing that bridge rather than following the fence line to Strathen. We know there's a track about 200 metres through the dense woodland but it was like really saturated, thick, mossy bog and uh, we started to doubt ourselves but anyway, we knew the track was here and we're on it now You can avoid and it if you... You could yeah. avoid it if you wanted to but we reckon it's better cutting through the woods, it took about 5-10 minutes if that So, now we just got the walk in to a queue Should be there, I reckon what Six kilometres, two down to Straffin. No, I thought it was four, wasn't it? Aye, it's four for Straffin. Oh, from Straffin. Aye. Aye, but we're not going to Straffin. Aye, but I think the track then sort of cuts to the left and we'll go up to the bottom. Anyway, it's not too far now. <laughs> <laughs> we're both tired. And grumpy. Aye. <laughs> hey, I'll bring you back further down. Oh my god, we're both shattered. We're actually talking about tomorrow only going as far as Surley's Boffy, which is only 10 kilometres, and it means it might take us five days to get to Kintail, and I've only got four days worth of food. So that's not ideal, but we're both feeling it. But I suppose we can get to Surley's and then take it from there. Another news, I'll spare the details, but my back side is not in a good way. I don't know if it's the, the leggings stroke uh, shorts combo, but I think this the sweat has just made it red raw. <laughs> the arse of a baboon. <laughs> but I had two lip balms, so one of them has now become my bum cheek lip balm. And it's helped it a little bit, because I've not got anything else. I could really do with some pseudo creme or something like that, just to soothe it a bit, but it's better than nothing. <laughs> oh, dear me. So yesterday was the blister, today, raw bum. What will tomorrow bring? 